Good morning friends. Today I'll be discussing about various mechanisms of bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics. Although all bacteria with cell walls contain penicillin binding proteins, beta lactam antibiotics cannot kill all of them because of various reasons. Thus, many bacteria become resistant to beta lactam antibiotics. First, I will discuss how alteration in the structure of penicillin binding proteins leads to bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics. We know that penicillin binding proteins are the targets of beta lactam antibiotics, but some bacteria can alter the structure of their penicillin binding proteins. Because of the alteration in the structure of penicillin binding proteins, the penicillin binding proteins lose their affinity for the beta lactam antibiotics and these results in the bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics. A sensitive strain may develop high molecular weight penicillin binding proteins and thus they lose their affinity for the beta lactam antibiotics and these results in bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics. A single bacterium can have many different penicillin binding proteins and beta lactam antibiotics can inhibit different penicillin binding proteins in a single bacterium. But when the different penicillin binding proteins in a single bacterium lose their affinity for the beta lactam antibiotics, the bacterium will ultimately become resistant to the beta lactam antibiotic. Because of the homologous recombination between penicillin binding protein genes, of different bacterial species, the structure of penicillin binding proteins gets altered and this results in decreased affinity for beta lactam antibiotics and ultimately this results in bacterial resistance. So we have already learned that among the various causes, one of the cause of bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics is altered structure of penicillin binding proteins. The other causes, the other cause of bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics is the inability of beta lactam antibiotic to penetrate the site of action. Let me clear the concept first. The surface structure of gram negative bacteria is more complex than that of gram positive bacteria. This is very important. The surface structure of gram negative bacteria is more complex than that of gram positive bacteria. Though some gram positive bacteria have polysaccharide capsules external to the cell wall but these structures are not a barrier to the diffusion of beta lactam antibiotics. The small beta lactam antibiotics can penetrate easily through it and reach the penicillin binding proteins and inhibit the final stages of peptidoglycan synthesis. But the situation is different with gram negative bacteria. As discussed earlier their surface stru structure is more complex than that of gram positive bacteria. The outer membrane in case of gram negative bacteria functions as an impenetrable barrier for some antibiotics. There are some aqueous channels in the outer membrane of gram negative bacteria. These aqueous channels are called porins. This is very important concept you need to understand. There are some aqueous channels in the outer membrane of gram negative bacteria and these aqueous channels are called porins. They are actually water filled pores found in the outer membrane of the gram negative bacteria. Only some hydrophilic antibiotics can diffuse through these aqueous channels. Actually, Porins acts as molecular filters for hydrophilic compounds and therefore only some small hydrophilic antibiotics can diffuse through these aqueous channels. But the number and size of pores in the outer membrane vary among different gram-negative bacteria. As Pseudomonas aeruginosa lacks the classical high permeability proteins, they are therefore resistant to wide variety of antibiotics while on the other hand, broad spectrum beta lactam antibiotics like ampicillin and amoxicillin and most of the cephalosporin can diffuse through the pores in the outer membrane of E. coli. Thus, more will be the diffusion of antibiotics through these pores, lesser will be the bacterial resistance. And because of the inability of some antibiotics to penetrate through these pores, 
bacterial resistance develops as in case of pseudomonas aeruginosa what we have seen as pseudomonas aeruginosa lacks the classical high permeability porins they are therefore resistant to a wide variety of antibiotics so we have already learned the second cause of bacterial resistance that is the inability of the antibiotic to penetrate to its site of action so till now we have learned about only two causes of bacterial resistance of beta lactam antibiotics till now we have learned only about two causes of bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics what are those the first one is altered structure of penicillin binding proteins and the second one is inability of the antibiotic to penetrate to its site of action the first one is altered structure of penicillin binding proteins and the second one is inability of the antibiotic to penetrate to its site of action now i'll be discussing about the next mechanism of bacterial resistance active efflux pumps are also responsible for bacterial resistance we need to understand the concept of uh, efflux pumps but before we go into the details of that first let us understand one thing that active efflux pumps are also responsible for bacterial resistance because they remove the antibiotic from its site of action before it can act what i have said the active efflux pumps are responsible for bacterial resistance why because they remove the antibiotic from its site of action before it can act and one thing we must note that this is an important mechanism of bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics in case of pseudomonas aeruginosa e coli and neisseria gonorrhea but before we go into the details of that we need to have a more clear idea about efflux pumps efflux pumps are located in the cytoplasmic membrane of bacteria what i have said efflux pumps are located in the cytoplasmic membrane of the bacteria which allow the bacteria to regulate the internal environment by removing the toxic substances so the efflux pumps are responsible in for removing the toxic substances in one word what we can say that efflux pumps are responsible for removing the toxic substances now antibiotics are also toxic substances to the bacteria does the efflux pumps also remove the antibiotics from its site of action before it can act these results in bacterial resistance hope now it is clear how efflux pumps are responsible in developing the bacterial resistance what i have said efflux pumps are located in the cytoplasmic membrane of the bacteria and efflux pumps are responsible for removing of the toxic substances thus they regulate the internal environment now antibiotics are also toxic toxic substances to the bacteria and the efflux pumps will also remove the antibiotic from its site of action before it can act and these will result in the bacterial resistance efflux pumps are found exclusively in gram negative bacteria and thus drug efflux is a key mechanism of resistance in gram negative bacteria so till now what we have learned we have learned about only three causes of bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics till now we have learned about only three causes of bacterial resistance to beta lactam antibiotics what are those the first one is altered structure of the penicillin binding proteins the second one is inability of the antibiotic to penetrate to its site of action and the third one is removal of the antibiotic from its site of action by the efflux pumps before it act before it acts the removal of antibiotic from its site of action by the efflux pumps before it acts now i will be discussing another important aspect of bacterial resistance some bacteria can produce biofilms those bacteria are called biofilm forming bacteria as they produce biofilm those bacteria are called biofilm forming bacteria the matrix of the bacteria biofilm contains several substances such as such as polysaccharides proteins and dna from the bacteria what i have said some bacteria can produce biofilms and the bacteria which can produce biofilms are called biofilm forming bacteria the matrix of the biofilm contains several substances such as polysaccharides proteins and dna from the bacteria 
this matrix provides structural stability to the biofilm. This biofilm provides protection to the bacterial cell against antibiotic treatment. Thus the bacteria becomes more resistant to the antibiotics because of the formation of biofilm. Although some antibiotics are able to penetrate the matrix of the biofilm, many antibiotics are there which show poor diffusion through the biofilm polysaccharide matrix. Therefore, formation of biofilm by some bacteria is another cause of bacterial resistance. Now I will be discussing about the most important mechanism of bacterial resistance to beta-lactam antibiotics. Some bacteria can destroy beta-lactam antibiotics enzymatically. They produce a type of enzyme called beta-lactamase which are capable of hydrolyzing the beta-lactam ring of the beta-lactam antibiotics. These beta-lactamase enzyme are capable of hydrolyzing the beta-lactam ring of the beta-lactam antibiotics. These bacteria which produce beta-lactamase are called beta-lactamase producing bacteria. Once the beta-lactam ring of the beta-lactam antibiotic gets hydrolyzed, the beta-lactam antibiotics becomes inactive and the bacteria becomes resistant. Although some bacteria produce different types of beta-lactamase enzyme, most bacteria produce only one form of the enzyme. Now, beta-lactamase enzymes are grouped into four classes. Class A, Class B, Class C and Class D. Class A beta-lactamases includes the extended spectrum beta-lactamases which are capable of degrading penicillins, some cephalosporins, and in some instances, carbapenems. Class B beta-lactamases are zinc ion dependent enzymes that are capable of destroying all beta-lactam antibiotics except astrionum, which falls in the class of monobactam antibiotics. While class C beta-lactamases are capable of destroying cephalosporins. And class D beta-lactamases includes cloxacillin degrading enzymes. Now, class A and class B beta-lactamase enzymes are inhibited by the commercially available beta-lactamase inhibitors such as clavulonate and tazobactam. So, clavulonate and tazobactam are commercially available beta-lactamase inhibitors which can inhibit class A and class B beta-lactamase enzymes. In general, Gram-positive bacteria produce and secret a large amount of beta-lactamase. Most of these enzymes are penicillinases. In gram-negative bacteria, beta-lactamases are found in relatively small amounts. Beta-lactamase enzymes can hydrolyze the beta-lactam ring of the beta-lactam antibiotics as we have discussed earlier and thus they make the beta-lactam antibiotic inactive and this is the major cause of bacterial resistance to beta-lactam antibiotics. So now we have learned almost all causes of bacterial resistance to beta-lactam antibiotics. Let us have a very short revision. What are the causes? The first one is altered structure of penicillin binding proteins. The second one is inability of the antibiotic to penetrate to its site of action. The third one is Removal of the antibiotic from the site of action by efflux pumps before, it's, before it acts. And the fourth one is formation of biofilm. And the final one is production of beta-lactamase enzymes which can destroy the beta-lactam antibiotics. So, hope we, uh, I think the various mechanisms of bacterial resistance to beta-lactam antibiotics is crystal clear among all of us. And I can make myself clear to all of you. And hope you all have enjoyed this session.